The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Our email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, xzoneradiotv, and our main website at www.xzoneradiotv.com. The Relmar Multimedia app is now available at Google Play, Apple Store, and on Amazon.com. And the Xzone store has reopened its door. It's been totally revamped with brand new merchandise at www.thexzonestore.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Niall Nickel. He is a technology expert, linked expert, LinkedIn expert, and social media specialist. Uh, it's been reported that 43% of teens reported an incident of cyberbullying in the past year, and because the technology gap, only 7% of parents are concerned or aware of the effects of social media with over 1 million children affected last year by Facebook alone. Now, undoubtedly, this is a growing concern all around the world as social media and technology soars to new heights. Technological and social media specialist Niall Nickel this hour will help to explain the ways social media is part of our lives and how we need to be aware of what our children are doing on it. His website is www.nilenickel.com. And, Niall, welcome to the X-Zone. Great to be here with you tonight, Rob. I have to ask you this. Where do you see kids in the future if they're so busy texting they're not communicating verbally? It's a good question, and it's a question a lot of people are asking. But, uh, you know, what uh, what it appears that's happening is they're going into this cocoon mm -hmm. to uh, allow their continued social development. And a cocoon's a good way to look at it because they get to explore the way that probably all of us as children growing up wanted to explore, sort of quietly and behind the scenes and without much risk, or so they think. And, uh, you know, they come out on the other side and, and realize that maybe they really want face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. But it's a process to get there. Um, how dangerous is social networking when it comes to cyberbullying? You know, I can't overstate this. I have uh, two, I've got an older child, but I've got mm -hmm. two young children that will be going through this, and it scares me to death. Uh, and I know what I'm doing. But, you know, it's one of those things that we've got to face, and we've got to guide them through. But we don't have the experience. You know, we didn't have this growing up. Sure. So uh, we have to learn the rules as we teach them. So it really does make it difficult. But, you know, it's difficult when you look at it anyway. I mean, the children that are really engaging in social media are at the prime age where suicides happen before social media ever came along. And I think this just makes it worse. You know, bullying has been around from day one. And, you know, in the past, you've been able to spot it a mile off. You know, you go into the schools, you see the bullies working, you know, teachers inter intercept and try, and try and straighten out the matter before it gets very serious. And the 
the statistics when it comes to cyberbullying suicides, next to none. However, with this uh, social media surge that we're seeing today with Facebook, MySpace, and, and the other social media that are being used by the children of the of the age of cyber cyberbullying, it's scary. It is really scary. Um, so where do we who do we put the responsibility on? Do we put it on the on the on the companies that are supplying the the social media networks? Do we put it on the parents? Do we put it on the teachers? Or do we put it on the individual users, the kids? Well, you know, I'm going to say another thing that was left out of that whole equation. You know, as parents, and I think we've got to put the responsibility squarely on us as well. Mm-hmm. You know, all of those play a role in the responsibility. But, you know, I look at, at social media use the same way that we might talk about teenage alcohol use. Uh, it, it's been a problem for a long time. Uh, in fact, I remember going through high school myself. You know, one of the, the real games was to figure out where you could go get alcohol before sure. you were old enough to get it. Well, guess what? Uh, they could put all the protections and bridges and everything else in place that uh, they want to put. But if your child really wants to get on social media, they're going to get on social media. And interestingly enough, they do it most of the time when they've got real tight restrictions through their parents' profile. All right, stand by, Niall. You and I have to take a two-minute commercial break. Exxon Nation. Niall Nickel is my special guest. www.nialnickel.com. That's www.nialnickel.com. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates right around the world, as well as satellite programming providers. My name is Rob McConnell. We'll be back in two. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the X-Zone radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, 
and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Niall Nichols is my guest this hour. Exonation www.nialnichol.com is the website. We're talking about cyberbullying. Uh, Niall is a technology expert, LinkedIn expert, and social media specialist. Once again, his website is nialnichol.com. Niall, uh, I, I, I understand that the parents share the responsibility, the schools share the responsibility, and it's a growing problem. I can see in the future where... It, it still has yet to peak, in my opinion. However, you know, we were talking about the alcohol that kids in high school used to try and acquire, and sure they did. I did. I don't know any kid who went to high school who didn't. However, taking into effect, uh, taking into account that cyberbullying is being conducted on these electronic pieces of equipment that everyone has in their pocket, why aren't the the social media sites such as, let's say, Facebook, MySpace, and others that the kids are using also being held accountable for what is being done using their system? Well, they certainly are. As a matter of fact, if you look at any of them, they all, mm-hmm. um, you know, prevent by their policies children from uh, younger than thirteen from being on the sites. However, it happens all the time. Sure does. And in fact, one of the reasons that Facebook designed uh, the under uh, the 13 to, if you will, 17 settings, which is what they've got, mm-hmm. is so that they could encourage children to not lie about their age. Because children were lying about their age so much, they knew it was happening, but there's just you know literally billions of users there. They can't catch them all. And so you know what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, listen... We know that you're going to get on. We know that you're going to use these systems, but use them with your real age because if you do, we put tools in place to protect you. We're only going to let people that are really connected to you uh, see your post. That's different than you know what happens at, when, when you're older with the mm-hmm. normal settings. Um, we're not going to let people with uh, the wrong demographics uh, connect with you. Now, could that happen? Well, certainly it can. I mean, one of the things that we know about social media is everything that is presented on social media is not really the truth, which is an important conversation to have. But, you know, they're trying to do what they can uh, to put these tools in place. But, you know, short of uh, uh, prohibiting everybody mm-hmm. until they're 18 or older and have a credit card or some form of ID like that that they could verify, you know, there's not a whole lot that they could do beyond what they're trying to do. All right. Uh, how can we protect our youth from the dangers of online activity then? You know, the, 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 the biggest thing, and it, it sounds like the easiest, I think it's the hardest, is you really have to talk with your child. You've got to open it up. And, you know, while certainly it's the biggest and best thing, it's also the hardest. I mean, they're most of the time teenagers. They don't really want to talk to us mm-hmm. anyway. Um, And, you know, one of the things that they report themselves when they're surveyed is they particularly don't want to talk to their parents about this. But what it does is it it really does create a a wonderful conversation you have. In fact, one of the things that I'm doing right now as part of what I call the conversation, talking with your children, is when I'm on social media um, with my 10-year-old right now, Um, I'll sit down next to the 10-year-old and, you know, I'll be on social media with them over my shoulder. I mean, they learn more by watching us than what we tell them. And I talk about some of the things that are going on there. And sometimes it makes me nervous because are there things inappropriate? Absolutely, positively. But it's the best way to really start teaching them, uh, you know, what's safe, what's not, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. Do the kids really need to be on the social media sites? Why can't they just communicate face-to-face 
Why can't they pick up a phone and, and use it? Why?